Ah, yeah. It's me, Ronnie Crutchella Bay, and welcome back. Uh, I hope last time was good for you as it was for me. So today we are going to be talking about uh, TV and film, which have a strong theme of drag and, yeah, just drag-related things. So, um, away we go! Away we go! So the first one I wanted to talk about was Wiz. Uh, it's not. It's not Wiz. It's 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 not piss. Uh, it's Drag SOS. So Drag SOS is basically um, a group of queens um, who go around the UK helping people to find their inner drag. And uh, at the end, it really brings. Um, for most part, brings out this confidence in them, which is really lovely to see. Uh, we have queens like Cheddar Gorgeous, Cheddar Gorgeous, from the Drag Races series for UK. Uh, we have Licorice Black, we have TT Bang, the wonderful AFAB queen TT Bang. I don't know why I'm doing that a lot this, this video, it's just, you know, um, I want to accentuate. <laughs> And uh, I've seen Mandela's in a few episodes as well. Uh, yeah, it goes to different sort of um, parts of the UK, which don't really celebrate drag, to say the least. They don't have a drag scene. They don't have anything like that. And they, um, yeah, um, they sort of bring it home, really. Um, I can relate to this quite a lot because I am from a part of the UK, which hasn't really celebrated drag in the past um like there's been like the odd queen but it's kind of hard to find um i've i've kind of helped a little bit with my friend mariah moments to bring drag here a little bit more uh, which has been amazing but this show really shows that um drag is important and how it really can change people's lives so the next show I want to talk about is uh, Rob and Ramesh versus Drag. So uh, they're not literally going to war. Uh, not literally going to war with um, Drag, thankfully. Uh, but um, this is Ramesh Ranganathan and Rob Beckett, two fabulous comedians uh, who uh, explore different uh, things that they hadn't done before. Uh, different challenges and this particular episode they did drag and uh, they became these personas and they got done up by none other than the Vivian and Bag of Chips I mean how lucky are they and yeah uh, Ramesh became um, Ruby Banganathan and uh, Rob Beckett uh I'm struggling to remember, to be honest. Um, but they looked fascinating, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, and Michelle Visage is in it, um, helping with the walks, and like it's it's great. First time uh, I ever saw Cara Mel, uh, who was training Ramesh just full on. Uh, which you would expect from such a, um, you know, experienced performing queen as Caramel. Uh, I absolutely love Caramel. And it's just a lot of fun. And they loved it. And it was so nice to see that. The joy which they got when they um, became these drag queens is just fabulous. So the next one is a film. And I am mainly doing this one because people... They definitely missed this one in the cinema. Like I feel like this was one that sort of uh, flew by people. It was called Theatre Camp, and it starred Ben Platt. Um, there's a few of us uh, who were quite good in it. Uh, and it's just a, such a funny, heartfelt film about uh, theatre kids and... Like there, um, it's like it shows the really annoying side and like the really kind of lovely side of it. But the reason I am highlighting this is because at the end they do a musical based on um the the woman who brought who um created 
uh, the theater camp who uh, is in hospital. And um, one of the members of the uh, theater camp who um, was just kind of being used for like um, doing bits and pieces around the place, like they weren't able to follow, show their full potential. And this was like an adult uh, who was a male, um, does drag for uh, to play the main character. And they are amazing. Like, I didn't even realize it. Like, I didn't even realize he, I didn't even realize that was who it was. They just looked so feminine and beautiful. It was quite something. I'm like, my God, could they sing? Could they act? Could they move? Like, yeah, it's, it may be one of my favorite um, uh, musical pieces uh, and performances in drag in a film for sure. Stretchy, stretchy. So the next uh, film I want to talk about is uh, Everybody's Talking About Jamie. So you probably know about this one. It's quite well known. Uh, the musical is about 16-year-old um, um, Jamie New, who is inspired by uh, the story um, uh, by Jamie Campbell, uh, who was in the documentary uh, Drag Queen at 16. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. And it, the film is so lovely. Um, the musical's great as well, if if you ever get a chance to see it in this, uh, the theatre. I haven't, but I've watched it on YouTube, so... And, yeah, uh, I think they made some really important changes in it as well. Um, I was quite annoyed when I found out that... Uh, the legend of Loco Chanel was cut out of the um, the movie because it's one of my favourite numbers. But when it got to it, this was me. The song "This Was Me" touched me so much. Like it made, like the it was insane. Like just the the love of like the past. It was such a dedication to the past. And um, the the 80s and like everything that went on back then, it just, it was tragic. And um, it was nice to see, uh, sorry about that. Uh, it was nice to see John McCree uh, return as, um, well, return as a part, well, as young, um, young Loco Chanel. Uh, John McCree, of course, um, played uh, Jamie in, uh, originally in the theatre version. Uh, so that was quite a nice little moment, especially when he is um, basically holding hands with um, the Jamie from the film, basically passing the torch. And um, Richard E. Grant was wonderful as the older one as well, uh, older Logo Chanel. And, um, yeah, I just suggest the film hugely. Uh, um, that's definitely my favourite bit. Um, if you don't see the whole thing, then just look up "This Was Me" on um, YouTube. I've I've performed it. Like I've I, yeah, I've performed it li live that song, and um, it really, yeah, it really resonates with me. It's beautiful. So. Another movie I want to talk about. A lot of these are movies. Uh, there, there are some TV shows, but um, we'll get to that. Um, we might. <laughs> uh, so the next one I want to talk about was a film called Cherry Pop, uh, which is one which you might not know about. Um, so this is um, a film. Um, it's based around uh, a very kind of um, dingy drag bar. And um, they have this event called the Cherry Pop where, like, the first, like, um, where, like, a drag queen is, like, going to pop their virginity. And um, there is a guy who is signing up for this, and he's straight. And uh, it's basically very much a film about um, the kind of the stereotypes which we have and, like, the fact that straight people can do drag as well, 
and there's a bunch of other different bits in there as well. Um, I believe it's Fifi O'Hara who uh, Jeremy, um, which is always weird because my dad's called Jeremy, um, who um, is playing this really sweet character who um, is trying to come out to their mum and like they just don't know what they're going to think. And um, uh, Latrice plays this fucking hilarious um he's like the the he isn't in drag like um i think it's like kevin or something like that um it'll, it'll come to me uh he's he's this um he's he's like the big fan who like goes to all the gigs and stuff and like he ends up having a wife at the end it's just hysterical and um detox is in it um tempest du jour is in it um, there's a lot of really good, um, there's a lot of great talent in there. Also, it will be hard to get the song, thanks for sticking it in me, out of your head for about a week. Just heads up. Thanks for sticking it in me. Had a good time. <laughs> so I'm going to have these as like a double package, this one. Um, back to TV. And these are kind of like more on like the um, reality elements. Um, first of all, we have the Frock Destroyers documentary. Um, I love a good documentary. Um, and it was really interesting to see the, um, the planning of the album of the Frock Destroyers and like the music. Um, and also it was very nice to, to have more of Bag of Chips, Blue Hound Ranger and Vina Gambo together as the Frock Destroyers. Um, yeah, uh, I think. Wild Presents did a really good job with that documentary. Uh, good for you, Wild Presents. Um, not, uh, there's nothing to blame on the edit here. Uh, burden. Uh, and also, God Shave the Queens. I tell you, I've watched it more than, than a normal Drag Race UK because I just find it fascinating. I find uh, the whole... Um, the touring, the uh, the clubland scene that um, that us LGBT people have put together, and like I loved seeing the cast just all together. And the first series is brilliant. Uh, I really love the first series. Um, it's sort of it's less individual than the second series, um, but the second series was great too um my favorite episode was the cherry valentine episode uh, i'm a big fan of cherry valentine and i just wish we were able yeah it just uh, watching that is really emotional because of course of everything that happened with her um and we yeah she she deserved better and like we she was such a positive person and you could see that in everything that she did. And uh, also, not to mention, um, uh, Cherry Valentine, Gypsy Queen and Proud, a fantastic documentary about uh, Cherry Valentine coming to terms with her Gypsy her heritage and um, sort of uh, trying to... Um, my mind's just gone blank there. But there was like some really wonderful things about uh, Gypsy Pride and uh, things that um, she kind of wished she had when she was younger. And uh, it was a really fascinating insight to that kind of thing because like, uh, it was something I never thought about before personally, um, not being from that background at all. So um, yeah, um, if you really want something kind of uh, educational, and also uh, more a share of Valentine, then I would hugely suggest that as well. So I have no doubt that I will think of some more <laughs> because I absolutely adore um, drag-based TV shows. I think um, the just embracing the culture and having this representation is so nice. Like... If it wasn't for, like, Drag Race as well, like, Drag Race UK, 
Um, last but not least, uh, for me personally, um, I personally, I don't think I would have accepted myself um, as easily as I have because it took me quite a while to uh, realise that I was a homosexual male. Uh, and yeah, and also, um, I wouldn't have done drag if it wasn't for that, 100%. And I wouldn't have met the people that I have. So I'm so fucking thankful for that. Uh, I just... it It's impacted me so much on so many levels. And, um, yeah. And we... The future looks bright for drag as well. I mean, we've got Jinx Monsoon on Doctor Who. Doctor Who is my favourite show ever. So, like, having Jinx, the Queen of Queens... In Doctor Who is going to be really special. And like so many different things like down the line. It's just, oh, what a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. So um, thank you so much, everybody, um, for um, for watching. And um, yeah, XOXO, RCB. Love you.